everyone, Shannon Kennedy here. I'm a CSM for VistaView Solutions. And today's brain booster will be reviewing incoming and outgoing payments in SAP Business One. So inside your SAP Business One menu, you'll see that you have a banking option. Inside your banking option, we have our incoming payments and our outgoing payments. The first thing that we'll be doing is an incoming payment. We're gonna open up our incoming payments and remember, you can always use your lookup menu for a quick search to whatever you need to find in SAP Business One, and it will automatically open up that menu option for you. Now that we have our incoming payment option open, we're going to select the business partner that is sending you a payment. Payments can be made via check, ACH, or bank transfer, bank transfer, or via credit card. Most of your vendors will not be operating in cash, but of course, cash payments are always allowed as well. First thing we're going to do is look up our first company. We're working with Burn Components today, who has sent us a check and we're entering it into the system. You'll notice that the bill to information for your customers automatically default from your business partner master record, and each, coming, each incoming payment will be assigned a unique number for that incoming payment specifically, which can be drilled into directly from incoming payments or directly from the BP record in their account balance. So now we see that Burn Components has one invoice open here. Remember that anywhere you see a golden arrow in SAP Business One means that you can drill in and open up additional information. We're going to select this invoice because this is the invoice being paid by your customer this week. Now, once we've selected the invoice to be paid, we do need to enter how much of the invoice is going to be paid and how. Our total balance due is 88,427. The customer sent us a check for exactly that much. So we don't need to change our amount due here. But if the customer sent us a check for only a partial payment or even an overpayment, we would simply enter in a specific total amount in your total payment here. And that would leave an open balance on their account or a negative balance or a credit on their account should they have overpaid for any reason. You can issue a refund after that or leave it on account for future need. Now, next to your total amount due, you have a small symbol here. This is your payment means. This is where you're going to be entering in how this customer has paid you. We're going to open up our payment means screen. And your first option here is check. Then you have bank transfer, credit card, and finally cash. They paid by a check. We're going to put in the due date or the date that the check was received here as we're gonna leave that defaulted in. Then we're gonna put in our total, which matches their total balance due of 88,427. Your country of origin, you can feel free to drop down and select depending upon if you're working inside or out of the country that you're currently residing. You can select the bank which that check information was deposited in from your drop down menu. And it will also set automatically to the default based upon your SAP Business One configurations. The account that will be affected by this payment should automatically default here. If for some reason it doesn't, we do recommend you contact your CFO or your accounting team manager and ask them what account this should be. Then you can simply manually key it in or select using your search button here and select the account from all of the available accounts in SAP Business One. Now this is going to automatically default your check number to check number one or two or three, depending upon how many checks you've entered into your system. However, Normally, in order to be able to track the check that was received, you want to put in the actual check number from the physical check received from your customer. In our case, it was check 1098, which we'll enter there. You'll select your yes or no for the endor endorsed. And if you have an originally issued by information, you can feel free to enter that here. Your fiscal ID is another non-mandatory field that you may need to enter depending upon who your customer is and the type of payment being received. Now that we've entered in our check number, confirmed our banking information, the date, and the total amount, we're going to click OK. 
This is going to automatically update your payment means inside of your incoming payment in SAP Business One. Now, once we've done that, we're simply going to click Add. However, before we click Add, I just want to note that there is a Remarks option here where you can manually type in any notes that you may have. This could be pertaining to, for example, a partial payment. You might want to put a note so that your CFL, CFO knows why you accepted a partial payment or the reason the customer said they were only sending a partial payment. Now we click Add. This will automatically pop up a system message from standard SAP Business One that lets you know that this incoming payment cannot be changed once it's saved. Your only options there would be to cancel that incoming payment after it's been created. After we click Add, now our account has been paid. Once your screen goes blank, that means that this document has been saved to SAP Business One. You can utilize your back button here to go back to the incoming payment that you just created, or you can simply drill into the business partner master record directly from that incoming payment or from your BP master option in your SAP Business One modules menu. This will open up the account, and now you'll see that their account balance is zero because they paid their account balance today with the check. If you drill into the account balance here, you're also able to see all of the information pertaining to incoming payments, invoices, and credit notes for this customer. You do want to make sure that in your top right corner, you've entered in the correct dates. If you don't see any information or you don't see an information for today, like we don't here, that simply means that our posting date information here is not correct. We're going to simply enter in 122 as our ending posting date. Once we do that, we should be able to see all of our information and all of the invoices and payments for our customer. So you see here, this is my incoming payment. Now we're gonna be opening up our outgoing payments. This is for paying your vendors. This operates much like your incoming payments and allows you to enter in a check, a credit card, an ACH bank transfer, all within your outgoing payments so that you can track your payments to your vendors. First thing we're going to do is select our vendor. Once we select our vendor, we'll see if they have any open invoices. For our vendor here, Beverage Distribution, they have no open invoices, so we have nothing to pay for them. Simply going to select or key in a vendor that has a balance and enter in a payment for them. I'm going to select my document here. It will automatically default to the total balance due, which is $81,187.50. And you'll see that in our total amount due here as well. You also have the option to partially pay for your vendors as well. You'd simply go back to your total payment here and you'd enter in a specific amount that you want to pay, whether it's over or short and then the remaining balance would remain open on their account, or they would open up a credit on your account. Inside our payment means, we're going to select the option of which we're going to pay our vendor with. We can choose to pay them with a check like we did for our incoming payments, or we can select bank transfer. Let's utilize a bank transfer. Now, I know that I'm entering in this outgoing payment today, but the transfer date I'm setting up with our bank is for tomorrow. So I'm going to enter in 119. If you have reference information regarding this ACH payment, you can enter it here. I'm simply going to put ACH and my initials since I'm the one that referenced the ACH information. You'll see that our overall amount also defaults based upon the invoice selected. And you can also select to enter bank charges, should they apply. Sometimes for foreign entities, whether they're customers or vendors, and whether it's incoming or outgoing, you may have a bank charge that you want to account for. And then you can enter that here. Since we don't have a bank charge, I'm simply going to enter in the total amount of our invoice and click OK. Now, once I click Add, it's going to automatically pop up with my system message again. 
since all outgoing and incoming payments can only be canceled and not changed once they've been added to the system. Then I'm going to select, and it's going to automatically save and go through any approval processes that I have set in the system. You see here that I have an AP payment approval process set in our system for payments over $50,000. That means that my manager will get an alert that I'm entering in an ACH for this customer that's over $50,000, and they'll be able to approve that on their end. Now, you can set up approvals for incoming and outgoing payments, and if you have any questions or concerns about those incoming payments or outgoing payments, please feel free to reach out to us here at VistaView Solutions or your SAP Business One partner directly. Thanks again for joining us.